Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. So what I'm going to be covering in today's episode is part six of my V-shaped guitar build. And in parts, I think it was three, four, and five, I had created full-size, full-scale 3D models of the fretboard, the neck, and the body. And those files are going to be used later on in the CAM process as I assign the tool paths and generate the G-code. However, before I do that, there is another step that I'm gonna cover in this episode that I like to do, especially when I'm building a new design guitar. And that is I'm going to take those elements and bring them all together into one file, and I'm gonna create a full-size, full-scale 3D mock-up of the finished guitar. And the reason I like to do that, especially with a new design, is it gives me the opportunity to make sure that everything is going to work together. The bridge is gonna work with the body and the neck, the pickups are gonna be in the right spot, the size and shape of the control cavity is going to be sufficient to hold all the electronics and will be positioned where it's going to work best. Uh, the, the neck and the fretboard will be wide enough to uh, accommodate the strings with the particular bridge that I've chosen. These are all little details that if you don't get them right, if you build the guitar and discover you've got a problem, there's not much you can do to fix them. If the strings are falling off the sides of the fretboard, your neck isn't wide enough. You're going to have to start over. And if the neck isn't sitting uh, deep enough into the pocket or maybe not, uh, or it's sitting up too high, you're going to have to figure out ways that that can be solved. And in most cases, you have to start over. So building this full-size, full-scale 3D mock-up on my computer is going to let me check all those different issues and make sure that everything's going to work well. So let's jump on the computer and put together a full-size model of this guitar. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new document in Rhinoceros 3D. And I'm using version 5 on an iMac. Uh, that's an older version, but it works. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import each of the elements that I created previously. And I'll start by opening up the 3D file that I created for the body. And I will then select all those elements and then copy them so that I can bring those over into the new file that I've created. And then I'll just paste it into that file. And it comes in as a wireframe. So what I can do is uh, change the view to the rendered view. And this is how it looks. Sort of a, a gray 3D model. Next, I will start working through opening and copying the other elements. So the next one up is the, the neck. So I'll open up that file. And you can see it here and it's a reverse headstock so the tuners are on the bottom edge of the headstock so again I will select all those elements and I will copy them Then I can close the neck file and then paste it into the uh, the new document with the body now oftentimes when you paste these elements in they're not going to be in the right position uh, they are in this case because of the way I built these files, but if they're not, you can just move them around and position them where they need to be. Next, I'm going to grab my fretboard. And this 3D model is just the perimeter shape and the radius as well as the front shelf where the Floyd Rose nut is going to sit. So I will select all those elements, copy them, and then I can close this file and then paste it into my new document just like I've done the other parts. And it drops in right where it needs to go in this case. I don't have to move anything around. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select... I've actually created a file for the inlay. And this is just so I can see where the inlay is going to be positioned on the fretboard. 
and so I've created that file and what I'll do is I will select all those elements and then I will copy it and then I will paste it onto the fretboard and this is just to give me an idea like I said of where that inlay is going to be positioned the next element that I need to place on this guitar are the frets now over the years I have made so many 3D mock-ups that I've actually uh, acquired a collection of all the different components that I have rendered in 3D and the frets are just one of them and these frets in particular are made to the exact specifications of the fret wire I used and in this case it is a 25 and a half inch scale with a 12 inch radius so it drops right into place and that makes it so much easier and here I'm grabbing tuners uh, that I have in my collection of parts and what I'll do is I will select all these and copy them just like I've done the other parts and these have already been arranged in the order that I or in the orientation that I want for this reverse headstock so um, it's just a matter of copying them and then I'll paste those onto the headstock so um, it's a pretty straightforward process and here you can see how I have the, the headstock arranged with the six inline tuners as a reverse headstock design so I'll paste those into place and here we can see how the tuners are arranged on that headstock pretty straightforward the pickups that I've selected for this guitar are Kerry King active humbuckers from EMG and to model those I just got the basic specifications for the dimensions of the pickup as well as the rings and I created full-size full-scale 3D model based on those dimensions and it's there's not a lot of detail here there doesn't need to be I just need to have an indication of those uh, dimensions in 3D so once I created those models like the other components I select them copy them and then I'll paste them into the file that I'm currently uh, assembling and then the next item I need to add to my full-size mock-up is the bridge and as it turns out I have a Floyd Rose 3D model that I created years ago that is based on a 25 and a half inch scale length with a Floyd Rose nut and I've also uh, rendered the strings and I actually rendered the strings in the gauge that I'm going to be using for this guitar and I think these are 10 gauge strings so this is all set up in a file that I have and all I have to do is select those elements copy them and then drop them in to my mock-up and now you can really start to see how this guitar is gonna lay out however I still have one more element that I need to place into this mock-up and that is the switch and the knobs and that is going to help me to make sure that I have my control cavity laid out in a manner that's going to work the way I want it to so I'll open up my file that I created and this is just a switch and a couple of knobs and I'll select those like I've done the other components copy them and paste those into the mock-up And so I essentially have everything that I need for this full-size, full-scale mock-up for what I need the mock-up to do, and that is to make sure that everything is going to play well together. You know, for example, the bridge block, does it extend too far down into the body? And the control cavity layout, is that going to work the way I want it to? The position of the battery box, the jack, all that, I can double-check it just to make sure it's going to work right. 
And another element that is important that I need to check is um, that the tuners are going to be positioned correctly so that they aren't running into each other or uh, you know, possibly uh, causing some issues with how the strings are going to run from the nut down to each tuner. Now I could of course extend the strings down, down to each tuner but uh, it really isn't uh, terribly necessary at this point. I've, I've actually done that before in Illustrator. But another uh, critical element is the the setup, and I can kind of check how the setup is going to work with this guitar. And with a Floyd Rose tremolo, the setup it's it's not super hyper critical at this stage because the bridge is going to be recessed into the body, so I have a great deal of adjustability with regards to how high the strings are going to be above the frets. But with this uh, approach to modeling the guitar, you know, if I was using a different type of bridge, I would be able to actually measure precisely the distance between the bottom of each string and the top of the frets, uh, specifically at the 12th fret or at the first fret. And I could make sure that I have everything set up the way it needs to in order to work properly. Now another benefit to modeling in 3D is you have the ability to visualize what the finished guitar is going to look like by assigning different colors and textures and materials to each of the elements in the rendering. So you can get an idea of how your finish is going to look. And in this case I'm going to be painting the guitar a flat black, both the body, the neck, and the headstock. Uh, all the uh, different elements, the bridge, the pickups, and everything are also uh, black hardware. So y you can kind of get a feel for that. And that can be beneficial if you're building the guitar for somebody else and they want to see what the colors are going to look like before you actually start to apply the finish. And that's going to help you to make decisions about how you'll finish the guitar. So uh, it's just another great way to do this without uh, having to deal with any guesswork. You know, and here I'm creating a render which I can save out as a JPEG and then I can email that to uh, whoever I want to see the guitar, you know, the customer or if I want to get feedback from other people about the design. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't I render every component on this guitar? Uh, for example, the potentiometers. Or why didn't I extend the strings from the nut to each respective tuner? And the reason for that is because I don't really need to do everything. Uh, for example, I can tell the arrangement of the electronics just by uh, creating the knobs. And so I don't really need to show absolutely everything. And when I uh, created the Adobe Illustrator file that I used to make the neck and the fretboard, that's when I actually check to see how the strings are going to run from the nut to each tuner and to make sure that I, um, that, that arrangement would, would work for me. But you can take it as far as you want to, and I think a lot of that would depend on what you're going to use that full-size mock-up for. If it's just for you to check some clearances, you can keep the rendering pretty basic. If you're going to be showing it to the person that you're going to build the guitar for, you might need to generate all those uh, little 3D models to get everything rendered so that they can see what, what's going on. And it just depends on, on those, uh, the situation that, you're, that you find yourself in. But for the most part, I, I'm able to keep it fairly simple. And the cool thing is, is over the years, I've built so many 3D models that I now have a folder that contains a wide variety of 3D generated bridges, tuners, um, I even have the potentiometers, different kinds of switches, different pickups, that sort of thing. And so I can just sort of plug and play, so to speak, as I build it. So creating these 3D mockups actually happens really, really fast. It's not that difficult to do. So in, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this, this uh, episode. I know it's, um, this is kind of a controversial topic for a lot of folks because I'm not building a guitar by using uh, uh, templates and my bandsaw and hand planes and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, the old school way of doing it. 
I did that many, many years ago. And when this technology came along, I embraced it and decided that that's the direction that I want to go. And I want to share that with other folks because this is where uh, manufacturing and production and crafting and building things, this is where it's headed, whether you like it or not. Digital technology is here to stay. And we're also starting to see um, the uh, uh, availability of artificial intelligence, um, virtual reality, all this stuff is going to become part of it, whether you like it or not. And I know some folks will embrace it as I have, and then other folks are scared of it. Um, it's sort of like when uh, the first motor cars came along. Uh, people were terrified of them, but the reality is we can't live without those cars today. And now we're seeing the internal combustion engine being replaced by uh, electric motors. So, you know, that whole world is changing. Everything keeps changing. Everything keeps moving forward. And you just have to accept that. And if you want to cling to the way things were done in the past, just know that that's, it's a romantic thing and quaint, but it's, not how things are going to be done in the future. So you can either uh, embrace this and move forward with it or remain in the past. And that's really up to you. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, I'm certainly not against it. And there are times when I like to just uh, pick up a, a spoke shave and carve some things with it. But, you know, when it comes to building guitars, uh, I'm really enjoying this approach to doing it. So, um, you know, if you want to criticize me for that in the comment section below, just remember you're probably inputting your comments using a very high technology device and uploading it through the internet, you know, over satellites and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you would be better served, I think, to write your comment with, uh, a crow quill pen using um, handmade ink on handmade paper and then hopping on your horse and riding over to my house and delivering it to me in person. But yeah, anyway, uh, I'm starting to ramble on here. It's becoming a rant and I don't want that to happen. So uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you're new to the channel, again, welcome. I hope I've earned your subscription. Uh, regardless, uh, please consider clicking that thumbs up button. That always helps. And in the next episode, which will be part seven, I'm going to uh, move on to the next step, which is going to be uh, uh, assigning the tool paths and then generating the G code and getting all that information organized as I prepare to start making this guitar. So until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for episode seven. Oh,